guys, it's me Chrissy and I'm here with my 2017 wrap up for May and that is uh, books 26 to 30 and so this month was May and so I have to read Magical Realism. Magical Realism is kind of defined like magical or supernatural elements tossed into a real life setting. So I kind of cheated this month by um, picking uh, Neil Gaiman's American Gods because there's supernatural, magical, and then there's like realism. So I was like, also because I look in Goodreads and people sort of um, categorize this as magical realism. So I'm like, who might argue with the people? So I, <laughs> I did that and um, I didn't regret it. This was a really quick read. For me anyway because I had like the weekend to myself so I just read a lot but it was also very heavy so I needed a stand um, this is a bind up and it doesn't belong to me it belongs to my friend but I just like to hold it anyway um, as much as I don't want to say this to really just categorize this like it's Percy Jackson kind of like Percy Jackson for adults um, you got your gods you got your uh, I was gonna say demigods, but I'm not sure if that counts anymore, but um, I think so, sort of. And then you got your, um, they, everybody moved to America, how they're doing in America, all of the gods became Americanized through the people, through the people who uh, immigrated there. There's also, to make the story come in deeper, Neil Gaiman added like little short stories in there um, called Coming to America, like how the gods were carried in someone's mind, like their belief were carried over to America. Like, um, er basically everybody who immigrated to America, or migrated to America, um, carried their old ways, their old gods, and they brought them to America. And then all of the gods were like forced to adapt to the um to the new country but it's not exactly like the old country because they're just a version of themselves in this new country the real old gods are still in the old place but um i just found it to be really beautiful and very sad but also it had this this sort of element of magic that neil gaiman just can just capture and i really really liked it and um i'm gonna have a video coming out that's the book versus the TV show but since the TV show isn't finished yet that might take a while so yeah and then because that was quite heavy I needed something light so I just picked um, Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell this is my first Rainbow Rowell book and it's not magical but it's realism ish ish contemporary I mean like it's kind of like a real-life setting in the 80s um, I really liked how it was set in the 80s because it removed like I guess the the way things are more casual now because before you know there was an element of mystery to people's lives because you can't just see who they are by what they post on social media you have to really get to know this person and it was so cute so cute um, there was like and like the main guy, Park, he's like half American, half Korean. And I just found that really cute because it's not like the typical contemporary white guy who's like kinda geeky but kinda cool. And he falls for this girl who's maybe not what normal people would go for, you know? It's nice because he it wasn't that, it was just this person liking another person and Eleanor as well like she's not the typical hot girl on the cover of a, a romance book she has she you know she's fuller bodied and she's like like um I would I don't want to say like he's more of a natural woman because you know every woman has her own shape her own size that is unique to her and, and her bone structure but I just mean like she Eleanor isn't the typical like in in when I was younger and I would read some romances and then or like those teen romances and it doesn't seem like the girl had had a lot of 
insecure like real life insecurities that you yourself can relate with because on the cover you know you can tell she's white and hot and like she's got a flat stomach and like small arms or something so here she's like she's a re she's like she dresses how she wants and she doesn't care who people or what people say about her and she's also made fun of her size that's not her fault but it was it just added that element of like real into it and you can obviously see that I don't read a lot of contemporary romance so I'm like I'm really just over the moon about this book but um yeah I liked it I like how they came together and how um they helped each other or and like just were together it was so cute I really liked it except the one thing that I can't stand with like romances though is or some books sometimes I'm just like you know just communicate but then I understand that if you communicate, the plot gets solved so easily, right? Right? That's, not, that's, that's just it. That's my only thing. Like, just communicate. How hard is that? I mean, come on. Okay, anyway, moving on. Moving on. Um, I need, it's May, so I gotta, you know, continue with what I, the goal I set for myself, which is magical realism, so... Um, I decided to pick up House of Mist, a novel by Maria Luisa Bombal, who is a Chilean author. And this was originally a short story, I think, um, published in Argentina in the 30s. This was hailed as one of, if not the first, magical realism book ever. She is in the same league as Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Jorge Bor Jorge Borges something it's here uh, mm, sorry Jor I have his book it's in the other room but I just can't remember all of it right now Borges Borges that one she was like in the same writing group as them and stuff and then she moved to the states and then she edited her short story and then it became a novel and basically it was like a really big deal because you know magical realism was basically born through from the South American um, countries I think so just correct me if I'm wrong uh, but I'm pretty sure that's the gist of what I can remember from when I researched about this book that being said now okay to the plot um basically it says it's about a young wife struggling in her marriage to a cold landowner because when she was a kid she really likes um, reading uh, fairy tales and so she thinks they're real and then she meets this kid who lives next door in this like big hacienda and um, she likes him a lot but I think only as a friend and then it blossoms into love but he is in love with her cousin and then um, it, yeah, things just spiral from there. But because she likes fairy tales a lot, she has a very, very active imagination. Like, girl, like, it's... Mm, yeah, it's a pretty... I mean, I can see why people would think it was pretty good, but I wish I liked it more. Uh, because I just... I couldn't help it. I'm just like, she deserves so much better than that guy. And then eventually, yeah, I guess he loved her or whatever, but... It's just like he deserved a really big slap across the face and then the backhand. I mean, mmm. Mm. So that's it. Um, then I decided to pick up from... I actually borrowed this book a year ago from one of my friends. And I figured that it's probably time to give it back. So I should read it already. And that is Percy Jackson's Greek Gods. Which is basically Percy Jackson um, telling the people the story of the Greek Gods. Or the... Parthenon, the Greek, the basically the Magic Twelve uh, of the Greek gods, and um, this isn't technically magical realism, but there is magic, and not a lot of realism. So there, I can as you can clearly say, I pick one word or the other this month. Um, yeah, that's it. This was just a really fun way to get to know the gods, like instead of Wikipedia and like their entire history or something. Uh, this basically gives you the gist of what and who this god is without getting too 
you know, rated R about it. And I just find that really cool because it's a great way to, for people to learn. But that being said, you know, you don't really get, there wasn't much plot because you already kind of know the gist of this stuff anyway, so. But yeah, it was a good, it was a fun read. Uh, it was a good uh, break after House of Mist. Yeah. Okay, enough about that. Um, my last read for Magical Realism May, or just books 26 to 30, is The Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. And let me tell you, like, I didn't like this at first. And as a matter of fact, I found it kind of hard to get into, but then I just made myself sit down and read it. And yes, I was actually surprised at how quickly I finished this book once I did start reading it. And like, I like how, like, I can even talk because it's just like, where do I begin with this book, you know? It was slowly. I started to like it very slowly and then by the time I realized I liked it I was like wow this is a good book this is a good book and it's basically about this girl who just shows up to this town called Bone Gap uh, out of the blue and she lives with these two brothers for about a year and everybody thinks that these two brothers are in love with the girl and that the girl is like just playing around with them and she's also really really pretty um, but then one day she disappears and the younger brother tries to explain who took her but everybody doesn't think he tried or they think he's lying or he didn't help because the way he explained how she was taken isn't exactly how everyone else would explain what happened so the story goes on from there and then um, I just I can't I don't want to like reveal more because that would just give away everything but like that's that's the gist of it it's kind of like a mystery but at the same time it just gets so good like the magical realism in this book just creeps up on you and you don't know what's happening until like it's happening and it's just it's good it's good like these prizes here i agree i agree so yeah that's it these are all the books that i read for 26 to 30 i might read a nancy boy soon um thank you guys for watching thank you for sticking around if you want to talk some more about these books you know let's talk about in the comments down below and uh with that i will see you guys next time bye